So the first thing we need to know with this pattern is how to get three strands at once. So this will be an easy method. You don't need to cut your yarn to do this. What you'll do is you'll start out by creating an S shape. So just like this. Then when you pinch your S together, we have our starting end. We can go ahead and we can make a magic circle with this. Whenever you're working these three strands, you're just going to pretend that all three strands are one strand. And then as we get started with our magic circle, we'll notice that the three strands runs out pretty quick. So in order to create more length to our three strands, we simply take this loop, put our fingers through, grab the yarn that's going to the ball and pull it. And you can pull that for quite a ways. And then as you're working it, it's just simply turned into three strands. And then when you get to where it runs out again, you just simply do that again. So let's get started with our magic circle. We are going to start by doing a stacked double crochet or a stacked single crochet, sorry, stacked single crochet. And if you prefer, you can substitute the stacked single crochet for a chain three. And I have a video for the stacked single crochet on my blog. Now we're going to, this counts as our first stitch, whether it's a chain three or the stacked single crochet. And now we're going to continue to do double crochets inside the magic circle until we have a total stitch count of 12. Now that I have 12 stitches, I can go ahead and pull this magic circle semi-closed. I like to leave a little bit of a hole just for a detail. I kind of like that. And then I'm going to join to the very first stitch or top of the chain three in the round. And I'm going to join with a slip stitch. Now I'm going to start the next round. So round two, you can either start with a chain three or you can do a stacked double crochet, single crochet. It's the height of a double crochet, but it's actually called a stacked single crochet. Then we are going to chain one and in the next stitch, we'll do a double crochet and chain one. And we're going to repeat that around double crochet in the next stitch and chain one. This will make it so that we have 12 double crochets with 12 chain ones in between them. So a total of 24 stitches when you count those chains. And we'll see how my yarn has run out. I'm simply going to make more. And then I'll just keep on going. So at the end of round two, we're going to join to the first stitch in the round with a slip stitch. And now we're ready for round three. But for round three, we are going to insert our hook into the very first chain space and slip stitch. This is kind of a setup stitch for this. Then we're going to want to grab a stitch marker. I find it's much easier to determine where you are in the round when if by using a stitch marker. And I'm going to chain five. And I'm going to place that stitch marker in the very first chain. That way I know where I started this round. Now I'm going to single crochet into the next chain space and then chain five. I'm going to be repeating that around single crochet in the next chain space and chain five. And now that I've made it all the way around and I've done my last chain five, it's time to slip stitch to the very first stitch of the round. So that's our chain stitch. So we're going to slip stitch into that chain stitch and that's the end of round three. Now for round four, we are going to do another slip stitch so that we kind of get to the center top of this chain five space. Then we're going to chain five. Place your stitch marker in that very first chain to mark the first stitch of the round. And then we're going to do a single crochet into the next chain five space and chain five. And then do a single crochet into the next chain five space. And we're just simply repeating that all the way around. We chain five and single crochet into the 
chain five space from the previous round. Now that we've made it back around, we will slip stitch into the very first chain of that round. And then the next two rounds are simply a repeat of our last round. So we will do a slip stitch to kind of get to the center of that chain five space and then chain five. Place our stitch marker at that very first stitch and then single crochet into the next chain five space. So you're going to be repeating that last round for the next two rounds. So rounds five and six are a repeat of round four. So at the end of round six, once again, we will join to that very first stitch in the round with a slip stitch. And you'll notice that even though we've been chaining five each time, the shape gradually changes a bit. And when we block this out, we'll see it even a bit better. But now it's time for us to use some stitches to make it into more of a hexagon. So to do this, we'll slip stitch towards the middle and then we're going to chain three. That counts as our first double crochet. And then we're going to do another double crochet into that chain five space. And you can go ahead and mark the very first chain three of this round. Then we're going to chain three and in the next chain five space, do a single crochet, chain three. And in the next chain five space, we're going to do two double crochets, chain two and two double crochets. So here's one double crochet and then another double crochet, chain two, and then two more double crochets all into that chain five space. What that does is it makes a nice point for us to turn this into more of a hexagon shape. Then we're going to be repeating that again where we do chain three, single crochet into the next chain five space, chain three, and then in the next chain five space, we'll do two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. Now I want to talk about joining as you go. So for your very first motif, you'll be repeating this all the way around and in the very, at the very end, you'll end up doing two more double crochets into this first chain five space that you used, chain two and join to the top. I'm still going to show you how to do that when I get there, but first I want to show that if you want to join as you go, so you don't want to sew these motifs on later, and you want to join them together, you can follow the diagram and place these how you want as you go. So let's do that part next. I'm on one of my corners where I'll do two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets, but I'm going to do the two double crochets. I'm going to wait to chain two. I'm going to grab the piece that I've been working on. Now I haven't blocked this or woven in any ends yet, but I do know that I need a motif to go into this section right here. So to do that, I will simply insert my hook into the chain two space on that corner. So this is where we're going to look where we want to add these edges and corners of our hexagon together. So before I chain two, I'll insert into here and then I will do my chain two and finish out by doing two double crochets into that same chain five space. Then I'll chain three. I'll insert my hook into the next chain five space where I'm going to do a single crochet, but then I also want to go grab and work through the single crochet from the side of this hexagon shape and that will join them together. Then I'm going to get a little bit more yarn here so I can keep on going. Then I'm going to chain three 
And on this next corner, I'm ready to do the two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets, and we're gonna join as we go on this. So before I chain two, I'm simply going to grab a strand from this corner where I've joined these two, and then chain two. And then finish out by doing two double crochets. And now I'm going to be working alongside this side of this hexagon by chaining three. Inserting my hook into the next chain five space and also the single crochet from that side. Doing a single crochet, chaining three. And then I'll wanna join these colors, these corners too. So I will do a two double crochet Before I chain two, I'll insert my hook into the chain two of this corner, and then chain two, and then two double crochets. Now that's all the edges I'll be joining for this section of the motif. Sometimes you'll be joining three or more edges at once. You just place it where it's going to go and you join those, those edges and single crochet stitches midway together to not have so much work when you're done. I'm gonna keep on working this one to the end, so let's do that next. Now to finish this out, I'm gonna chain three, and in the next chain five space, do a single crochet, then chain three, and in our starting chain five space, we're going to do an additional two double crochets, chain two, and then we're going to join with a slip stitch to the first stitch of the round. And then we can go ahead and pull our yarn through and fasten off. Now I plan this to have quite a bit of extra yarn left over so that we will have enough to make a really nice fringe for this. So you'll keep making the hexagons, the full hexagons and placing them where they go. And I'll be right back to talk about the half hexagon. So as you can see, I've got this half motif here that helps straighten out the top edge of this shawl. So let's go ahead and talk about how to do that. To get started with the half hexagon, we're going to be starting with that one to three strand method and creating the magic ring again. Then we are going to either start with a chain three or a stacked single crochet and place six total stitches into this ring. Now your chain three or your stack single crochet does count as a stitch. Then we can close our magic ring, but we are not going to be joining. We are simply going to be turning and working in rows. The first stitch of row two will either be a stack single crochet or a chain three, and that does count as a stitch and then we will chain one. If you've chained three, you're going to go ahead and chain an additional chain for a chain four so that you have that chain one space. In the next stitch, we will do a double crochet, chain one. We're going to repeat that across, double crochet, chain one. placing a double crochet and a chain one in the last stitch. And then we're going to end off this row by doing another double crochet into that last stitch for a total of 13 stitches, including the chains. Then we're going to go ahead and turn. We're going to start by chaining five. So row three starts by chaining five and then single crocheting in that chain one space. Then chain five single crochet in the chain one space. We're gonna repeat that across. And then in the very end, we are going to chain five and place a single crochet in the top of the stitch from the row below. So we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven loops. Now it's time for us to turn. Now for row four, and this will also be row five and six, we are going to chain five, 
single crochet in the first chain five space. Chain five, and then single crochet into the next chain five space. And just repeat that across. And then we will single crochet into the last chain five space and turn. And we're simply going to be repeating that for the next two rows where we chain five and single crochet into the chain five space and just do that across. After row six, it's time to turn and do row seven, but row seven will be worked if you're joining as you go. You'll want to get ready to join as you go. I've done the, the first half hexy over here, so now we can see where my next one needs to go into here. So we're going to start by either doing a stacked double crochet, and you can use the chain five space to do so, or you just start with a chain three. Then we are going to insert our hook into the space where we want to join, and we're going to do a chain one, and then do a double crochet into the same chain five space. Then we will chain three, and then as we go into the next chain five space, we will also want to catch the single crochet from the neighboring motif, and single crochet, chain three, in the next chain five space, we'll be doing two double crochet, chain two, do two double crochet. But when we do our chains, we'll wanna grab a stitch from that corner and then chain our two chains and then continue the two double crochets into that same chain five space. We're just going to keep working like we have before across here until we get to the last corner of this motif and then we'll talk about that. Chain three and now I'm ready to do my last corner. I've kind of turned my work a little so it's easier for me to see. And I'm going to be doing a double crochet and then when we do the chain one, insert your hook into the chain two space from over here. And we're simply going to do a chain one and double crochet right into that last chain five space. And we are ready to fasten off for this edge motif. So as you can see, it helps create a nicer line across the top of this when you're wearing it. And it will look really nice blocked. So I'm gonna keep um, working these motifs and then I will come on back. Now I want to take a moment to talk about working the three strands at once because this could also be a great stash buster for say a worsted weight yarn. This is an extremely flexible pattern. If you didn't want to work three strands at once, you could just work a single strand of fingering and it would be much thinner and more delicate. You would probably need more hexagons to create a bigger shawl, but it could also be a cowl. And as far as this being a stash buster, it's perfect for that. You can grab whatever yarns you have left over from other projects. I even think sometimes you might be able to mix different types of yarns, whether it be wool or acrylic, as long as you just make these um, hexagons the same size. This is a great stash buster project. Now, I can't even fit this beautiful wrap on my camera because it is so much wider than my view is. But you can see after being blocked, these really open up nicely and they look like hexagons. I blocked after I had joined everything. And then the one thing I really liked adding was fringe. I love, love, love this colorful fringe. And so I simply used a lark heads knot to tie all this fringe on the bottom. And then I went ahead and I cut it similar to the shape of these edges, which gives it an amazing drape as you can see in the images. This entire shawl has such a wonderful drape. You can wear it as a scarf and kind of scrunch it up or just as some, a wrap around your shoulders for whenever you want. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. I hope you come back for more videos soon.